ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد all praise is due to Allah we praise him abundantly and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil within our souls and the consequences of our bad deeds whomsoever Allah guides no one can lead astray and whomsoever Allah allows to go astray because they do not want any guidance then no one can guide and I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah he is alone having no partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and his messenger. We ask Allah to exalt his mention and grant him peace and send his blessings and his salutations upon him, upon his companions, his wives and all those who follow them on the path of righteousness until the day of recompense. O oh, you who have believed, be mindful of Allah and fear him the way he deserves to be feared. And do not die except in the state of submission as Muslims. As to what follows. Brothers in faith, there are certain expressions that are seldom used, rarely used. Perhaps one will use them once in a lifetime or on seasonal basis. When it's Eid, there are certain expressions that the people circulate and use whether they are from the Sunnah or not, is not the point of discussion right now. Things like, كُلُّ عَامُرْ وَأَنْتُمْ بِخَيْرٍ تَقَبَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنَّا وَمِنْكُمْ وَمَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلِكَ These expressions that the people usually greet each other with for Eid, Eid Mubarak and the likes. And to discuss right now the agreement of these expressions with the Sunnah would be an irrelevant topic in this day and time. So instead of doing that, let us address some of the expressions which we use on daily basis multiple times. Yet, amazingly, are not only against the Sunnah, but a violation to so many aspects of our belief. And this thing that I'm about to discuss is so common and widespread among every nationality and every language and almost every Muslim, illa man rahim Allah. The distinguished few are always those with knowledge. Knowledge is what differentiates the Muslims amongst each other. Not the lineage, not the nationality, not the skin color. Knowledge. Qul hal yastawi alladhina ya'lamuna wa alladhina la ya'lamun. Say, are they equal? Those who know and those who know not? Absolutely not. They're never equal. And when you touch upon these subject matters, you will find that knowledge is that which illuminates the path. And sometimes it is very standard, regular knowledge. We're not talking about specific knowledge of the science of hadith and the senate to say this is among selected few. No, no, this is something that is available to most of us. And many might have come across the evidences, but never applied them to their daily lives. Or no one showed us how to apply these narrations to our daily lives. So inshallah, today we will remove this misconception and we will correct our statements so they can be in agreement with multiple ahadith of Bukhari and Muslim. But before I give you the evidence, Let's speak about the issue. The issue is the expression insha'Allah that has been widely misused. In fact, for the most part, 
Most people, illa man rahim Allah, use it when they're not supposed to use it. And they don't use it when they're supposed to use it. It is so amazing, you will see why by the end of the khutbah. Let's begin with people not using it when they're supposed to use it. Anytime you speak about a futuristic event that you wish to embark on, you wish to do, you must add insha'Allah. Because the Prophet ﷺ during his time, when approached by some of the Jews or those who were doubting Islam, he told them, come back tomorrow. I will tell you about the people of the cave and you know, the Sa'alu and the Ruh and the spirit and what have you. But he didn't say insha'Allah. So Allah revealed the ayah in Surah Al-Kahf. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِلْنِي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتَ don't say regarding anything that I will do this tomorrow unless you have the idea and you say inshallah it doesn't have to be only for tomorrow so if next week it's fine this is the common usage Ghadan could refer to anything in the future from this second onwards 10 seconds from now is the future so people will say many sentences Tomorrow, I will travel to Riyadh, then I will stay there for a couple of nights, then I will go to the Mam, then I will travel there, come back, and inshallah, it's never said anywhere at any point in that statement. But this is what we're supposed to say, because this has to do with the future. So this is something that we need to be mindful of. Our religion is about mindfulness and heedlessness. The mindful people apply the most basic sunnah and they get immense reward for them. And the heedless people miss out on the most basic sunnah and miss out on great reward. It's the same thing with saying Bismillah before you eat. How long does it take for one of us to train himself that I will not start eating until I say Bismillah? Many people don't think. When there's one bite left in the meal, oh, Bismillah fi awali wa akhiri. Jazakallah khair, once a, once a week, once a month, every time you eat, Ya Shaykh, have mercy on yourself. Learn how to say Bismillah every time and forget occasionally, because we're all forgetful. The same thing with putting on the shoes, or entering the bathroom, putting on the shoes, you begin with the right first. Leave the masjid, and count from 10 people if you will find one, maximum two, that actually put the right foot first. Eight of them will put the left foot first. Ya Sheikh, it's a very basic thing. Yeah, and you're getting, tell me, for 10, 15 years you haven't figured it out yet? If you do the same mistake with your boss and it's a simple mistake, you will be fired in a week. And every time he gives you his business email, you send it to his personal email. He tells you, forget about the personal email. Send it to my business email. You just do this three times, you'll be looking for a job. Because people are not going to accept that. It's just too weird, too heedless, too absent-minded. Saying Bismillah, putting on the right foot, for, the right shoe first, and the reverse when we take them off, enter in the bathroom with the left foot, enter in the masjid with the right foot, leaving with the left foot. These are basic things. The heedless, never think about them. The mindful, Always think about them and great reward is awaiting them, inshallah. So the same expression, inshallah, is to be utilized. You train yourself and then you'll be able to do it. Left-handed people or right left-handed people want to eat with the left hand. What's his excuse? Ya akhi, I'm left-handed. So did you know that the right-handed person is able to eat with his left hand? Yes, ask how many right-handed people, brothers, by mistake eat with the left hand. How come the right-handed person is able to forget and eat with the left hand, but the left-handed person can't seem to use his right hand? This is a satanic excuse for laziness. Nobody said you to play tennis. Well, brother, I am left-handed. Habib, you're not playing squash. This is called eating. You pick up the bite, you put it in your mouth. You train a baby, he will do it. La Qadr Allah, if you lost your right arm, you're going to convince me you're going to fast for the rest of your life? Why? You can't eat with the left hand. 
if you lost your right hand, you better believe people eat with their feet if they have to. You can eat with your, your right hand if you train yourself. It's a matter of training and discipline. Mind over matter. But laziness accompanied with satanic whispers, we just want to do things the, the easy way. Not acceptable. Inshallah is the easiest thing to say. You train yourself, you will find yourself saying it all the time. But that would lead us to the second part of this discussion. When you're not supposed to say inshallah, this is when you hear people say inshallah all the time. With the dua. May Allah accept your hajj, inshallah. May Allah forgive you, inshallah. Allah yawfqa, inshallah. La. This is when you're going directly against the hadith. Hadith of Anas and Hadith of Abu Huraira and is narrated by others with different wordings. But listen to this hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يقولن أحدكم اللهم اغفر لي إن شئت اللهم ارحمني إن شئت ليعزم في المسألة فإن الله صانع ما شاء لا أكره له None of you should say, Oh Allah, forgive me if you will. Oh Allah, have mercy on me if you will. Rather be firm in your request. Because there's nothing that will force Allah to do what He doesn't want to do. And let me bring it closer to our minds. And to Allah belongs the highest example. If you wanted to go on vacation, and it was an urgent matter. It's an urgent matter. You really need to go. It's almost like a sick leaf. But you go to your boss and you say, I need to take the next two days off. So if you want, approve it on the system. Do you consider that to be a means of urging him that there's something wrong? Absolutely not. But if you go to say, I have problems back home, I'm in need, my family needs me, I need to go back, there's no negotiation. So when someone says to Allah, and to Allah belongs, I said, forgive me if you will, you, you almost are saying, it's up to you if you want to forgive me. Is that someone that is really keen on acceptance? No, this is someone who's, he's not, you know, nonchalant as they say. I'm okay with both options. You forgive me, that's fine. You don't forgive me, that's fine. No, Habibi. If you don't forgive me, I'm destroyed. Oh Allah, forgive me. Forgive me three times. You beg Allah for forgiveness. You don't include, inshallah. Whether the dua is for yourself, for your children, for your brothers, for the world, whomever you make a dua for, exclude the expression, inshallah. Because it's against the Sunnah. So there are times to say, inshallah, that we need to apply them, and there are times to avoid it. You might not have paid attention to what I'm saying. As soon as we finish this khutbah, and you start speaking to brothers, you will hear it more often. It has become so common, people don't even notice it. You will hear how often we wind up saying, inshallah, with a dua. But this is the benefit of knowledge. And this is the benefit of the scholars, and I am not one of them. But this is what we learn from our scholars. And it's our job as people who are involved in da'wah to convey this to the people. This is how the society will, will be rectified. This is how Islam will be established. Not through military means right now. People getting excited, they want to go and fight and kill. And we're so ignorant of the basics of our deen. We don't agree on anything. What are you going to establish with that? Nothing. This is why the Prophet وسلم, in the beginning, he did nothing but give down. They were not permitted to even defend themselves until the Sahaba became ready. There was tarbiyah, nurturing. Today there's fanaticism and radicalism. 
Young man, he loves the deen. Somebody whispers some nonsense. He goes and he kills himself and kills Muslims in the masjid. I mean, in the haram. This is insane. This is insanity. It just doesn't click. If it's not permissible to do this to the kuffar, you are not allowed to blow up a train to kill innocent people. This is not warfare. How are you going to do this to a Muslim? You want to meet Allah with, with the blood of Muslims? If you can meet Allah with the blood of a non-Muslim, Ya Shaykh, an animal, if you kill an animal wrongfully, Allah will hold you accountable for that animal you killed on the Day of Judgment. You want to meet Allah with a human soul? When Allah says, and whoever kills one, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا It's as if you killed everybody in the world. This is the, these individuals that are radicalized and crazy, they don't know the basics of our deen. They don't know the ABCs of our deen. It's all emotionalism, emotionalism. And it's about time that we mature. You have to be emotional about your faith after you learn it. And when you learn it, you will know your limits. You will know that Allah gave rights to people in charge and the people under them and each has his accountability with Allah. You're not the one who will hold them accountable. We have strict guidelines from the Sunnah. When to speak and when to keep your mouth shut. But these people don't follow these instructions. It's chaos. Everybody wants to speak about everybody. And the end result, Muslims are being killed. Bloodshed among the Muslims. Then we will have to meet Allah with the accountability of all of those. Knowledge, my brothers, from its roots to its branches is the way out. We must dedicate time to learn our deen so that we can protect ourselves in the time of fitan. Ask Allah to make us all among those who are guided. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. Since the second part of the discussion has to do with the expression, إن شاء الله during the dua, it is recommended that we learn the etiquettes of dua as well, which are applied sometimes and are ignored at other times. Among them. My brothers in faith, is as Allah described, that we should call on Allah tadarru'an wa khufya. Tadarru'an is that state of humility. The state of humility and khufya has to do with the lowering of the voice. And if you have noticed, those who attend the khutbah, you see me scream throughout the khutbah until your ears pop. But once it comes for the dua, I mellow down. Because you don't scream to ask Allah for anything. So what we hear and we see commonly in Ramadan and outside Ramadan, the Imam screaming his lungs out and the people behind him screaming their lungs out, Ameen, is also against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who when the Sahaba did this, he told them, Irba'u ala anfusikum, relax yourselves. The one you're calling is not deaf. Allah does not need you to raise your voice in dua for the dua to be accepted. Allah wants to see from us humility in the dua. And to bring the point closer and to Allah belongs the highest example. If a beggar came to you and started screaming in, in a melodious way, I want the money, oh, please give me the money, all this, you would run away from this person. For those who are patient and won't knock him out. But if someone came and said, spoke to you softly, gently, without trying to rhyme and turn it into some literature, I need money, help me out, I'm in a state of need, your heart will sympathize. And to Allah belongs the best example. This is the sunnah of the dua. Between neither is silent so no one hears, if you make a dua publicly, nor is it loud, that it transgresses. And the Prophet ﷺ already foretold us 
that they will come from my ummah people that will transgress, transgress in the dua. They will cross the line in the dua. So when we want to make dua, it is recommended that we are in a state of wudu if we're able to do so, that we're facing the qibla, that we're raising our hands just like that. Many people are heedless, they put their hands together and then in the mindfulness they close them like this. You have just become a Christian making dua. I see this all the time. Brothers are heedless and then in the process he checks his nails. After he crosses his fingers he realizes he needs to cut his nails. What dua is this ya Sheikh? You are asking Allah for something for Allah's sake. Focus on what you're saying. Don't bring your hands together, don't clap them, don't cross your fingers. Don't interlace your fingers. Don't go like this. The sunnah is to raise your hands like a beggar to Allah. Whether it is here or at the area of the face or above, there are different narrations, we're not gonna differ. But this is the sunnah. And you ask Allah of whatever goodness of the dunya and the akhirah. When the imam, however, is given khutbah and he makes dua, it is not from the sunnah for anyone to do this. Because the best khatib ever, the Prophet وسلم, was addressing the best audience ever, the Sahaba, they never did that. Throughout his life, not even once did that occur. Unless it was istisqa. They were seeking rain, and this is a separate occasion included in khutbah. In which case we will all raise our hands and even turn our garments inside out. But if you're not doing istisqa, then you don't do that. It's not from the sunnah. And if anyone wants to do it, we say no problem, provide a single evidence and then the scholars will investigate further. But up until now, no such evidence has been retrieved. Therefore, you shouldn't raise your hands when the khatib makes dua on Jumu'ah. But you say ameen softly after every dua. Afterwards, if you want to make your own dua, then it becomes a sunnah to raise your hands again. These are some of the basic things which we need to highlight every now and then. Slowly but surely, if we start implementing and practicing these aspects of our deen, then Allah Azza wa Jal is generous. When He sees some effort, He will bless us with more. The objective is that we need to get ourselves out of the trouble that the Ummah is in. And it will not happen except through knowledge. It will not happen except through cleansing Islam from the innovations and the additions that the people have added to our religion. We have to take it back to its pure form and then implement it in its pure form, then we can expect the change from Allah. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusim. Allah will not change the condition of the people until they change what is within themselves. We need to change what is within ourselves. It begins with the expressions of the tongue. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to facilitate. Allahumma ya muqallib al-kuloob, thabbit kuloobana ala deenik. Allahumma ya musarif al-kuloob, isrif kuloobana ala ta'atik. Rabbana la tuzir kuloobana ba'da ithadaytana. Wahab lana min ladunka rahmatan inna ka anta al-wahab. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Wa kina adhaba al-nar. Wa salli lahumma wa sallim ala nabiya al-mukhtar.